Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Michael, you are watching IDV, and in this video I'm showing you some really useful tips and tricks for your Mac. Let's go ahead, roll the intro, and jump right in. So this first one I wanna show you is minimizing windows a lot easier. By default, if I open up an application, the basic way that you minimize a window is going up to the top left and clicking on this yellow button. However, these buttons are kind of small and they're kind of finicky. Sometimes I press the wrong one. So let's go ahead and fix this. Inside of system settings, you wanna scroll down and click on desktop and dock. You'll then see an option here that says double click a Windows title bar too. By default, I believe this is set to zoom, but you can change this to minimize because I think I minimize windows a lot more than zooming. Now that we've changed this, if I open up Safari again, if I go up to the top title bar and double click, it's gonna minimize. This makes it so much easier and faster to minimize your windows. Next up is moving around different windows on your screen. So if I open up system settings, if I wanna move this around my screen, the default way is to click into the trackpad or mouse and then move it around with one finger. There is actually a much easier way to do this. What you wanna do is go to search and then type in pointer control. Click on right here. And then from here, you wanna click on trackpad options. And here you can see we have a dragging style. You wanna change this to three finger drag. And now I can move around my settings window by simply placing three fingers on my trackpad. And I can move it around without clicking into the trackpad. This makes it a lot faster and easier. And it also works on the desktop as well. So if you wanna select multiple items, instead of clicking into the trackpad and dragging to make a selection, all you have to do is drag with three fingers to make your selection like that. Okay, moving along, this next one is on the desktop. If you have a lot of items and files and folders on your desktop and you wanna clean them up, there's actually a really cool built-in way that you can do this. So for this example, I'm just gonna go ahead and make a bunch of example folders like this. And a lot of people try to push them off to the side, but they always end up looking a little bit unorganized. There is a really cool built-in way that you can organize these automatically. All you have to do is right click or click with two fingers on the trackpad and you'll see we have an option here that says clean up. If you simply press on this, it'll organize them in a very clean line like this and it looks so much better already. We also have options where you can clean up by name, kind of file, date modified, date created, size, and also tags if you use those. So this is a really cool built-in feature that not that many people know about. Next up is for Finder. There's a really useful feature built into Mac that for some reason is turned off by default and it doesn't make any sense to me. So when you're in Finder, all you have to do is go up here to where it says view and then go down here and click on show path bar. Again, I don't know why this is off by default, but this just makes it so much easier to understand where you are in your Mac's local storage. You can see here I'm on my desktop, which is under my personal profile, which is under users, which is stored on the hard drive. So if you're deep in a bunch of files and you wanna know where you are, having the path bar enabled is so much easier. And you can also click on each of these options to go back further in the path. And then another really cool feature in Finder is the customization of your title bar. So you can add anything to your title bar for quick access. For example, I might want Photoshop in Finder. That way I can drag any files right onto Photoshop to open it. So I'll show you what this looks like. All you have to do is find your file or your application and press and hold command and then drag that into the title bar of Finder. Now you can see for this example, my Photoshop is right here. And if I click on it, it will open it. But also if I drag any file on top of it, it'll open that file inside of Photoshop. So this is really useful if you have an application or a bunch of files that you wanna access all the time from within any window in Finder. All right, this next one is hands down my favorite. I just discovered that I could do this on my Mac and it is so cool. So you'll see on your keyboard, you have a bunch of different buttons. The ones I wanna focus on are volume and brightness. You know by default, you can just click them and change your volume and brightness, it's pretty basic. However, if you wanna jump right to the preferences for those specific options, brightness and volume, all you have to do is press on option and then press one of the buttons. So for this example, I'll press on my brightness key. All I did was held down option as I press one of the keys and it automatically opened up my display and brightness settings. The same will work for volume. So option and volume, and it'll open up settings automatically and bring me to my sound preferences. Like I said, I just discovered that my Mac can do this and this is really, really cool. 
All right, this next one is for pitcher in pitcher. A lot of people know that you can do pitcher in pitcher on the Mac, but they just don't know how to invoke it. So when you are playing a video in Safari, you're gonna see that you have this little volume icon here in your tab bar. You can click this to mute all audio coming from this tab, which in and of itself is a useful feature. However, you can actually right click or click with two fingers and you'll see we have an option here for pitcher and pitcher. If you click on this, you can see the video is now in pitcher and pitcher. I can now minimize Safari and I can bring this video anywhere I want on my Mac. This is really, really useful. And uh, I recently discovered that you can do this as well. And I've been using this every single day. This next feature is for the trackpad. So if you have a Mac with a mouse, this will not work. You do have to have a force touch trackpad. So when you are in any area of Mac OS and you have words, you can force press on that word to get information. So here I have the word Montreal. If I force press on it, you can see it's gonna first bring up the dictionary definition. I can then go down here and tap on Siri knowledge and it's gonna give me a bit more information. I can also click on images as well and see relevant info about this city. So this is really, really useful. A lot of people don't even know that you can do this and you can force press on literally any word or any link and get way more information about it. For this next one, we're gonna stay inside of Safari. So you know when you're in a website and you wanna share a link with somebody, the basic way is to go up here, click on your URL bar, and then you can copy it right from here. There actually is a much faster way to do this. And once you get used to doing it, you're gonna notice that it is indeed a lot faster. So when you are on the website, all you have to do is go Command L and Command C. By doing Command L, it automatically brought up your URL bar, which as you saw is a lot faster than finding your pointer and clicking up here. So I'll do it again just to show you how fast it is. Command L, Command C. It's that fast to copy the current website that you're on. Next up is renaming files on your Mac. So the default way is to click on the file and then click with two fingers and then you'll see we have an option here that says rename. But you're gonna be astounded just how fast you can actually do this and a lot of people didn't even know that you can. All you have to do is click on the file and click on return and now you can start renaming the file just like that. Moving right along, this next one is for if you have an Apple Watch. If you have an Apple Watch, you can unlock your Mac without even touching it. So as soon as you open up the lid or wake it up, it is going to unlock. All you have to do is open up system settings. Then on the left hand side, you want to scroll down until you see touch ID and password. And then here you'll see uh, connected to your Apple account is going to be any Apple watches that you have. And if you simply turn this on, it's going to ask for your passcode one time. And that is literally it. So for me, even though my MacBook Air has Touch ID, I find myself never using it because I always have my Apple Watch on. And every time I lift the lid of my Mac, it's gonna authenticate using my Apple Watch and let me in automatically. This next one is a relatively new feature. It is called iPhone mirroring. It should automatically be in your dock after the latest software update. But if you don't see it, simply open up Launchpad and then type in mirroring and it'll be right here. As soon as you open it for the first time, you do have to authenticate with your passcode on your iPhone. But as soon as you open it anytime after that, it's just gonna automatically connect. And you can see here, this is my iPhone. I've talked about this in my previous MacBook Air tips and tricks video, but this is very, very useful. I do find myself using this a lot simply because there are certain applications on your Mac that just aren't supported, but they are on the iPhone. So I find myself using this for Twitter actually all the time, as well as NHL. Uh, if I'm using my MacBook and I'm dialed into my work, if I don't wanna grab my iPhone on the other side of the room, I can simply start doing a screen mirroring and I can do pretty much everything I can do on my iPhone, but on my Mac with my trackpad and cursor. So it works pretty much the same. The swipe gestures are a little bit harder to use. So you pretty much have to click at the bottom of the screen to go back to home. But if you wanna use a application that's not available on your Mac, this does work in a pinch. And the final tip I wanna show you is FaceTime backgrounds. This again, I believe is a relatively new feature in the latest software update from Mac OS. So simply open up FaceTime and you'll see here I am. Now, if you go to the top of your screen, you'll see that we have a FaceTime icon. If you click this, you can see we have a bunch of different options, but the one I wanna talk about is the background. You can see here just by clicking on it, it now changes the background. And if you have one of the newer MacBooks with like the M3 or M4 chip, you can see the cutout is going to be very, very precise because it has a much more powerful chip and it's able to do uh, real-time processing of your background uh, using the ISP built into the chip. 
And you can also click on the little preview right here and you can change what your background is. So here I can go to Apple Park. I can then go to the rainbow statue at Apple Park. It looks like all of these are actually at Apple Park, which is kind of funny. Up here, you can choose one of your own photos. And if you go over here, you can choose a solid color instead. There are a bunch of really cool background options built into Mac OS. And uh, yeah, the cutout works pretty well. You can see it's actually working through that little loop in my hair, which is kind of cool. And uh, if you have a messy office, but you're uh, going to a Zoom meeting and you need to look professional, this is something really cool that you can do. And since I'm here, I figured I'd show you a few other FaceTime effects. So if you go up here again to the FaceTime menu, just make sure reactions are turned on and then you can do different things with your hands. So if you hold up your thumb just like this, it'll give you a bubble. Uh, you can also do like a peace sign like this and I believe it's gonna do balloons. If you do two thumbs up, I think this is gonna be fireworks. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And uh, there are a few other ones that you can do. So this is pretty cool. It makes FaceTime a lot more fun. And uh, yeah, you should try these out on your Mac. Okay, I was gonna end the video there, but I actually have a few other bonus tips and tricks I wanna show you. The first one is how you can get your battery percentage at the top of your screen. Simply open up system settings, and then inside of search, put in percentage. And then here you'll see show battery percentage in the menu bar. If you click this, you can turn it on from right here if you want. Also, if you have a Mac with a trackpad, instead of clicking on the date and time to see all of your widgets, you can actually do a two finger swipe from the very edge of your trackpad, just like that. Another one, if you find your dock is too big or too small, you actually don't even have to open up system settings to change it. You'll see here, we have this very thin little line. And when we go over it, you can see the icon has changed. If we click into our trackpad and drag, we can make it as big or as small as we want. And then the final feature I wanna show you is your battery health. So you're probably familiar with inside of settings, you can click on battery and then you can see your battery health right here. There actually is a much more detailed view that you can see in relation to your battery health. So what you wanna do is click on the Apple logo here on the top left, then click on about this Mac. Then click on more info. Then you wanna scroll down and click on system report. Then when you're in here, you wanna go on the left-hand side and click on power. So here you can see maximum capacity. This is the info that it showed inside of system preferences. But what it doesn't show inside of settings is the cycle count. You can see because my computer is brand new, I only have three cycles. But if you're curious about how many times your Mac has been fully charged and fully depleted, you can find that here inside of your battery information. All right, you guys, that's gonna do it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and also comment down below telling us what your favorite feature is we covered in this video. My name is Michael with IDB and I'll see you in the next one.